We're in the Caduceus Cellars tasting room. This is the, basically the first day of our opening. It's going to be a key factor in, in sustaining this small business. You can do tastes and pours. You can also take the bottles uh, to go. I also have a, another permit here. It's a beer and wine license as well, so that I can also sell other local wines as well. Uh, some of the ones in Cottonwood, some in Cornville, Page Springs. Eric helps make some of Sam Pillsbury's wines. We have some of Sam's wines here as well. Those vines are from our Arizona Stronghold Vineyards in southern Arizona. So I'm not just representing my wines here, I'm also representing the wines from our wine family. Politics, logistics, finances, just trying to get this location open uh, and running. It's taken me eight years to get to this opening right now. And lots of money. <laughs> This building is super old. It's been through several fires. You can see in some of the cracks in the wall where they've kind of redone the brick, uh, fell down. It's been several, several places before. When we took out the, the plaster and stuff that was covering up the brick and the wood was covered, uh, I came in here and kind of did a, a brief sketch of what I wanted to do in the space. Um, and this is a testament to my intuition and just kind of following my heart. Uh, we pulled all the stuff up off the floor. I had a basic drawing of how I wanted the place laid out. And on the floor over here, within an inch of what I drew on this sketch, I drew the bar on my, on my floor sketch. There was a footprint of a bar in the, almost the exact to the inch spot that I drew my bar on the floor over here. So it was almost like the space was telling me how it was supposed to be laid out in essence. This tasting room should mean for Jerome an alternate source of revenue. It should mean an alternate wellspring of uh, creative energy. This is, a, this is a creative community. Jerome in general is just very creative people, to, but I don't think anybody's kind of come along with the idea or some other process other than you know, painting or pottery or glass blowing. I think this is that next step in an element that, that binds the, the artistic processes with the utilitarian, kind of combining that Republican and uh, Democrat, liberal, uh, hippie, farmer, conservative, all those elements kind of come together with, uh, with a space like this. Uh, I think it's gonna end up, somebody's gonna come along with an even better idea of what I'm doing here and take it to another level. Oh, well, for the, the Pussifer stores up above, up next to the tattoo shop and next to the bong shop, where you can pick up a few dildos. So this is kind of my, my spiritual connected side, uh, community oriented side. Uh, the Pussifer store is the, uh, the yin to the yang. That's my dark sense of humor. My irreverent sensibilities are expressed up in the dildo block. The stores that were in this space before uh, did decent business, but it wasn't a long-term sustainable business, and it was completely contingent on tourist traffic. This kind of a process that we're doing here will generate destination traffic, uh, as well as generate that impulse, already existing tourist income. It'll, it'll stabilize the economy in this, in this town, make things a lot easier. I mean, in a perfect world, we get enough interest from chefs around the country to, to, to actually move here, open up small restaurants featuring local produce and uh, local cuisine, and then we can, on our menu, serve a few bites of what they're doing in their place. And then when somebody says, I want more of this, we can say, you know, head on down to our friend's place. They're serving the whole meal here. Go have a big old bowl of cavatelli, and they serve our wine in their restaurant so you can go down and have the full experience in a sit-down setting. This is more a tasting room. This is just an example of what's in the bottle.